Greetings fellow humans, my name is Flailbot. Welcome to New World, New Problems, the introductory episode to a mini-campaign playing with Kataf's Southern Realms as the New World Colonies, starting as El Cadavo. This episode is primarily going to be going over the New World Colonies tech and buildings and units, so anyone who already has memorized all of their units can just skip on to the next episode. And anyone who wants to hear me blabber about unit balance and how much I like swashbucklers is free to stick around. Uh, El Cadavo starts with a unit of light cannons, which is great. They're the only siege unit that I've seen uh, the New World Colonies having. But we'll look into them more later. He also starts with a unit of swashbucklers, which are super cool. And he starts with the unit pistol use, which are less super cool, but that's okay. As far as I can tell, the New World Colonies has just boatloads of gun-wielding units. And I really liked the free company militia, or free militia company, whatever, from Empire. So I thought, oh well, certainly I will like this. I'm playing on Vortex campaign because likelihood that I'll drag my lazy corpse over to here and then over to here or yeah it's just not gonna happen this game is about new world colonies not old world colonies so that's what we're focusing on I will marshal the band. here's my cool guy and we'll start by looking at units and then we'll go into uh, the legendary lords or lord singular since I can't recruit the other one yet and then we'll go into techs so, units. The basic spearman unit is there. The basic spearman with shields, if I can click on him, is also there. They are going to form the sort of core of your army before you can get to some of the nicer units. And also swordsmen are here. They have shields, no shields. Then we've got crossbowmen, they're exactly like Empire, so I'm not going to talk about them. And then we also have handgunners, exactly like Empire. One thing we don't have that Empire has is um, free company militia, but we have some other cool guys. Sorry for clicking around so much, I'm just trying to get the correct icons. We have pikemen, which I unfortunately can't compare them to the halberdiers directly. They have bonus against large and defensive stats and no shield. I'm not sure how they differ from Halberdiers in a usage situation. So Halberdiers are slightly better. Well, let's see, okay, they cost less than pikemen, but Halberdiers have slightly more hit points. They also have armor piercing as opposed to not armor piercing. Uh, the pikemen are not armor piercing. so. I'm not quite sure how these guys fit in. I'm interested to compare them more directly when I can actually recruit them. They also have charge defense against large, even though it's not listed here, the halberdiers as well as the pikemen, so it's not... Um... Oh, they have charge defense against all. Well, that's kind of cool. And they have this fancy thing. Plus 20% melee attack, which isn't amazing. That's like plus 5 melee attack. Okay, then we have um, a basic empire captain. Nothing to talk right home about. Handgunners, nothing to write home about. Swashbucklers, these guys you want to write home about. They are basically buffed up uh, free company militia. Not only do they have this super cool dirty fighting thing, which that's just super great. You know, your couple of frontline units are just going to be debuffing whoever they're attacking. That's great. They also have armor piercing missiles. They fire kind of slowly. Uh, 11.2 seconds or 11.7 seconds instead of something more like 8 or 9 seconds like the pirates will show later. But, oh, and of course the range is terrible. But they're basically frontline and they'll gun down things while you're just kind of twiddling your thumbs, which is fun. These guys are the same except they have uh, hold on. Yeah, no vanguard deployment on the swashbucklers, but they also have dirty fighting. They have slightly better range. They have no armor piercing, but they fire more quickly. So these guys are sort of a 
more all-purpose, less potent version, as far as I can tell. Melee attack and defense, 28, 25, whereas the swashbucklers have uh, 30 and 29, so these guys are a bit nicer. We also get a unit of them here, so, so we can actually just compare them directly. There you go, so the Sartosan Pirates have more pew pew, more ammunition, they're slightly faster, which doesn't seem really relevant. They're significantly less armored, which makes them, well, they're just not as good as, as, as at standing there. But of course they have that nice de debuff to the minus five melee attack and minus five melee defense. So not exactly sure how to mix them. Probably baseline Sartosan Pirates. They're also significantly cheaper in terms of upkeep and these guys for anti-armor. Let's continue on. You also have Greatsword Infantry. Um, it looks to me like the picture is a bit different, so I'm suspicious that they have different stats to the greatswords of the Empire, but I'm actually not certain because I don't know those offhanded. No shields, no bullets, basic heavy infantry. Super cool. Pistoliers, everyone knows pistoliers, they're the mounted version of your hand gunners. <laughs> and then you have uh, riders who are, as far as I can tell, a slightly upgraded version. So. They cost 180 instead of 125. They have 30 missile damage instead of the also 30 missile damage, but they have more range. No, identical range. Melee attack 20, melee defense 10, 18, 14, speed 90, speed 78. Well, I guess they're more heavily armored. Okay, they're significantly more armored and their leadership is higher. I guess they're well, pretty expensive in comparison. I'm not sure. I was looking at these earlier and I didn't feel like the riders were something that I would have wanted to invest in over the pistoliers. Um, are whilst moving? Are whilst moving? Okay, who knows. Let's continue on with infantry type units. We've got a paymaster bodyguard. This unit is complicated. I've looked over it and I'm just not quite sure what he does. So he's a big High melee defense, anti-large unit, no shield but heavy armor, encourages nearby units, which is nice, and then he has these various things. So it's got a duration, but I don't see an activation. So I'm thinking as long as you are in melee, then it's basically like an encourage except for plus eight melee attack. But this is a very weirdly constructed ability. Then you have a one use 45 seconds, all allies in 50 meters get this big Hawken bonus, which is nice. Not amazing, plus a melee attack would stack pleasantly with this one, and then you've got good things in unit for psychology if you've got your spearman up against a terror guy, sure, why not? And weapon damage can never, can never hurt. And then there's this guy, which is... If... The paymaster's leadership falls, right? Because it's oh, come back here, paymaster. If the paymaster's leadership falls, right? Because it's disabled if leadership is high, then everyone gets minus five leadership on your side. So, not so great. Not sure why it's one time use. It seems to be constant as well. But some of the abilities are structured very weirdly in uh, even vanilla. Adventurers are upgraded versions of swordsmen, as far as I can tell. They have a bit more armor, right? Swordsmen only have 30, and they have a bit more of everything else. Uh, you can also buff them with some great text later, which I'll point to in a smidge. Lancers, this is cav. They run into things. They have a decent charge bonus. They're fast as heck. Much faster than, like, Empire Knights or something. Uh, broken Lances, I'm pretty sure, are just the directly upgraded version. They have really high armor, less speed, and then the melee attack and stuff is similar. Let's double check. Yeah, 22, 26, 28, 23. Uh, but their charge bonus is higher. And these guys are shielded, so Shock Cab that doesn't get shot to death as much, and Shock Cab that might get shot to death but has massive armor to make up for it. So those are your only cab units. Never mind, there's also this one. Same thing, normal anti-large cap. Nothing amazing going on. 
crazy high armor. Also a bit expensive. <clears throat> this is a pretty limited roster, and I kind of enjoy that the roster doesn't just have garbage everywhere. These guys have good range, they have decent damage, they have solid ammunition, not amazing, their melee stats are absolutely terrible, they're slow, their leadership is okay. They have, however, block more than half of all small arms fire, which means these guys will crush opposing missile infantry. So if you have missile infantry in front or other gunners or something, these guys will just tear through them, or at least they will not die while tearing through them. So we'll see, but they're a tier five unit, which is really high for, yeah, for a shielded crossbow. Right, though, don't dark shard that the same thing. Then we've got a limited amount of wizards, only jade wizards and bright wizards. Uh, so fire and life, right? Yeah, life magic. We'll see what we do with them. And then we have two cav, uh, two artilleries, anti-infantry and anti, uh, so armor piercing anti-large. And that's that's the core of the whole thing. So I'm not 100% sure how builds should go. I'm thinking if you have, what are they, swashbucklers? Swashbucklers, where are you? Then you can kind of skip uh, um, handgunners. One thing that this army seems to be weak against, if you don't have enough guns, I suppose, would be cavalry. We'll see. I had trouble, I uh, played a little bit earlier, and I had trouble with the ridiculous amount of marauder horsemen that the accursed Skeggy spit out. Missile cav are played upon the land. Instead of a warrior priest, we have the Myrmidian, uh, not talky good, Templar of Myrmidia. They don't get their name changed here, but that's okay. And I don't think you can ever acquire any witch hunters, so it's really just warrior priests. Empire Captains, and Battle Wizards. Now let's pop over to, what did I say, Heroes? I might have said Heroes, I might have said Tex. Let's do Heroes. I really like, I really like El Cadavo. So he has a story, right? Because El Cadavo's thing is like, he did more things than any one man. He tells more tales, he's done more stuff. And so he's got all these progressively better bonuses to, yeah, look at this, I'll keep minus 30% for all units, that's crazy great. And it continues on. I don't know if these are exclusive for one another. If I move my mouse really fast, hopefully you can read them all. Uh, but they seem like fun. Lance formation, I am assuming that applies to shock cavalry as well. Um, bonuses, super, and another minus 10 upkeep. I feel like these might be exclusive for one another, but I'm not really sure. And then there's some other fun stuff. This one's weird, plus 50 growth. Not really sure what that's about. This one's good. Charge bonus increase and speed increase with no other penalties. Usually you get some minor penalties when you hop on a warhorse of some sort. Um, that's not the case here. So we'll probably get him a uh, cav just so we can go places and apply his little debuff as much as we can. We'll talk a little bit more about the debuff in a moment. Other things for survival. This guy has Scarred Veteran twice. Don't ask me why. I didn't make the mod. So if we ever get into the yellow line, then we should have some pretty exciting stuff going on. I think he's a duelist as well. I don't know where that actually would uh, would show up. So he's supposed to be quite good in melee. He may just be a melee expert. Anyway, my favorite ability is called this Adventurers at Best, and it's partner one, scum at worst. Because I love pistol units. They're just so fun. You go pew, 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 and then you stand there and you scrum it out with the guys and pew, pew, die pistols. This is great. Melee defense, range damage, leadership of all pistol units within his army. And then tier 2 of this bad boy is all armies faction-wide. And the same thing happens over here with Scum at Worst. Plus 5 melee attack, melee damage plus 1 AP and base, so plus 2 melee damage, and it applies to everything. This ability is unique to El Cadavo. I looked in both of the other Lord types and uh, they're just not there, so sad times. He's also got Dubakari, which is an interesting ability. Uh, you throw that down, and uh, as far as I can tell, three <laughs> three units within range get this ability for the rest of the battle. Plus ten, plus eight melee defense, strong vigor, and unbreakable. Yeah, who knows? <clears throat> Sometimes it's hard to tell what what abilities actually do in total war. 
So, and then we have Dirty Cactus, which is just super cool, absolutely lovely, plus, uh, plus the Dirty Tactics poison effect to everyone in your army, which is good news. Uh, down here, he's got some very weird things going on. This is normal, no one cares. Death by Mercenaries is weird. You get more mercs, but you have less public order. I'm assuming that also applies to enemies, so just park him elsewhere while you're not recruiting. Um, casual replenishment rate does not seem so useful because he already gets a bonus, and there's another bonus somewhere else here. Um, and then ambush defense chance. I would have preferred ambush bonus, but whatever. What are you going to do? Lightning strike, that's normal. I am disciplinarian. Weird place to be. It's usually a tier one thing. Free reign, another public order penalty uh, that gives you not a significant booster rating. Um, minus added casualties, enemy heroes don't do good things, and then Renown Fear doesn't have the upkeep bonus. So the blue line, aside from maybe just Brute Marcher, seems pretty underwhelming. Lightning Strike is, of course, always useful, but no one wants to dump four points into super minor recruitment cost changes or tiny casualty replenishment rate bonuses to, to pick up lightning strike so we'll see what we do with him not quite sure now the other lenders dry lord is pretty interesting and the lords in general are pretty interesting in terms of what they can do they have a merchant prince which has all these like weird campaign type bonuses with like bonuses research speed and all this like just non non-combat related stuff uh, and the lords are, if I recall correctly, pretty standard empire lords. So nothing much going on there. Okay, so that's units. Buildings, again, similar to the empire, a little bit more limited, it feels. Uh, we don't have the Reich's fort or, or whatever, but we have sort of the core, the core buildings. Um, yeah, some units that clearly are involved in this. Uh, mod, but are not used by the New World Colonies, are listed here, and here as well, the Publican Guard and so forth. These are other units that are in the mod by Wiktilia and Astalia and whatever else. We have um, the Noble Retinue, but we don't have any of these other things as far as I know. Oops. Yeah, so. Uh, let's see, can we reach the monolith? No. I'm just gonna show off a little battle maybe before we start the campaign for real. In the beginning, I can only recruit basic units. It will take me a few turns before I can get around to getting either the harbor so I can recruit, recruit pirates, or eventually tier 3 will get me the swashbucklers, which I'm most excited about, but that is a whiles away. So let's talk about techs real quick after one more thing. Picked Veterans is super weird in my opinion. Uh, it only applies to a really limited amount of units, but then Dirty Dozen applies to a bunch of stuff. <clears throat> Unfortunately, the way that the, the mod works is these things don't really fall into categories, so like the Swashbucklers and Adventurers get this bonus, but Carabiniers, Carabinier are not relevant to us, or Royal Guard, or Riders. Probably because I don't think we're going to get riders and who cares about their melee ability, their gun units, and knights militia and so forth. So these are strange to say the least. The normal lords have better bonuses to the adventures and so forth. Okay, let's talk briefly about the tech because I love the tech. Well done, Kataf. Kataf. Uh, this is how you get regiments of renown. You have to unlock these doodles because you need to have enough money. And then they appear here. Easy peasy. They're not amazing, as far as I can tell, but they're pretty fun. Then, I, I like this tech setup. You have to pick all four of these techs, and then you get the last one. And I absolutely love this tech. This is one of the things that I think they really failed to do in the vanilla game, is make the techs interesting. Check this out. Strider for adventurers, swashbucklers, and swordsmen. Stock for swashbucklers and spearmen unshielded? and encouraged for lancers and broken lances. So we have broken lances. We can use them to encourage our units. My favorite part though is 100% enable stock attribute for swashbucklers and spearmen. That means you stick your spearmen and swashbucklers somewhere off to the side, they're invisible, and you can use them to like 
ambush things, right? Because the swashbucklers have guns, so they just come along on the side and pew pew pew. It changes theoretically with just a tech how these units can be used. Because by the time you get to this tech, you're not using spearmen unshielded anyway. But they would be a great way to ambush some cav or come up behind a cav which has just done a charge and oh dear you didn't notice that i had these invisible stalking spearmen here bam rear charge from the spearmen into the into the cav that's great super cool swashbucklers have guns spearmen are anti-lines you could take out cygors or whatever that are just hanging out in the back look at the rest of these things are pretty potent um Aside from the fact that they don't apply to a lot of units, because this list is longer than what I have. So, militias, rangers, scouts. I don't think we have any of those. We've got pikemen, lancers, if that counts, for broken lances, and adventurers and riders. So, some things here. Leadership plus 10, not bad. Long research time. This is nice, because some of the units that we recruit become significantly better. I don't know if scout units are a thing we have or militias or anything, categories in this game are weird. So I don't no idea how good this is. But plus melee attack and melee defense for great sword infantry, that's good. They're gonna be crushing face later. Plus five leadership for all your heroes and lords, immune to psychology for all your lords, bonus for the versus large for your adventurers, that's okay, not terrible, and melee defense again for the adventurers. So that's stacking with this uh no not with this with the leadership bonus as well. So that's good. Mercenary hosts, not amazing, not terrible. It's casualty replenishment rates that you can find all over the place. More armor piercing damage for everyone, that's great. Plus 10 armor for heavy armor units, no idea what that means. Not a good category, to be clear. Campaign movement rate plus 10 and leadership plus 5, that's great. Campaign movement range everyone loves and leadership we're always attacking. So, that's easy. Speed for all your armies, nah, that's cool, right? Now your guys are zipping along a little bit faster than them, and you position your pistol-wielding ambush dudes just slightly quicker. And figure loss reduction for small armies. Uh, <laughs> figure loss reduction small for all armies, also great, especially if you're going to be running around. Uh, leadership order size, that's pretty neat. Lord crew rank, yeah, whatever. Swamp attrition reduction, whatever. This applies... Um, the Hardened Country Keys of the Rose applies to quite a few units. Uh, the Adventurers primarily would be what we have here. So Adventure Bonus, Adventure Bonus, Adventure Bonus. Yeah. Um, more stuff, not terrible. More income, more growth, more recruit stuff, not terrible. Plus your experience, experience for pirates. They're going to make up the core of your, you know, my army at least at the beginning. So that's fun. Uh, everyone loves us more. Basic stuff. Nothing exciting, nothing exciting. We don't have any knights, I think, except for those lancers and stuff. Untainted plus three faction wide could be nice. And public order plus two. Upkeep minus 10, that's great. Apparently the southern realms will hate us, who knew? And again, more public order. So some of these are good. I really like this one just because it adds a little bit of fun stuff to your spearmen. I can always imagine myself creating a spearman unit then, uh, you know, I want to see if I can make it to here. We'll show off a little battle. Hey, I'll make it there. I can see myself pulling a spearman unit in and saying, ah, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let this spearman unit... I'm going to give him all these banners, and he's going to run in, and he's going to wreck face, and it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. I'm just going to run in here and do this one battle, assuming that Mazda Mundi doesn't really, really slowly destroy the place he won congratulations master mundi now switch into march and go all the way back home oh, i didn't do it maybe i'll chase him down we'll find out and then we'll call it a day if you have any questions you know send them to kataf kataf or send them to me i don't know anything what does the emperor bid did it oh good can i attack no, I bored stuff. I misclicked. GG. Well played. Darn. Well, thanks for watching. I've been Flailbot, and this has been the introductory episode to... What do I call it? New World, New Problems? <laughs> so thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys soon with the next episode.